Thank you for watching Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Unfortunately, all good things have to come in. We're coming in a month, so this is going to be the last installment of Spader Timber. But we're going to want to go out on a fucking good note, so we got a fucking real good fun movie today. We're going to be reviewing The Watcher. Real quick, by the way, you say that ain't a blur right ain't DVD. This is a fucking actually a HD DVD. What the fuck is a HD DVD? Well, when Blu ray first came out, Blurry was coming out basically from Sony and Panasonic to Sheba's over on the left that said, hey man, we got left out of this Blurry. We got to release some shit. So they released HD DVD. It's a lot like a Blurry, except it don't have as much storage space on it, but it has high def video, high def audio and shit. It was kind of the first one out of the gate by a few months, but it just never got the support or whatever. It just didn't take off. But there are a few movies out there that you can only get on HD DVD that aren't on Blu-ray yet. And I believe this is one of them. I have not found this on Blu-ray anywhere. So I'm still holding on my HD DVD copy because it's a lot better than watching DVD and shit. So all that fuck technical fucking format war bullshit outside. Let's get into The Watcher starring James Spader, Marissa Tomei, and fucking Keanu Reeves in a stunt double. Alright, The Watcher is a real interesting movie, you know, in the realm of James Spader flicks. It was kind of like the last big studio movie he did before he started doing all this like bullshit, direct video stuff like Alien Hunter and shit. In the movie, he plays a real tortured fucking ex-FBI agent. And basically, you know, they start hinting around to his fucking background. He was chasing a killer that really fucked him up. You know, the killer did something that really emotionally affected him. Now he's like a real mess. He's popping all these pills. He's shooting. He, he, I don't know why he fucking... I thought it was insulin, but he pulls up his shirt and he's got like a bruise on his gut. And he has to shoot some shit into him. I don't know. But, but this motherfucker, he's high as a kite every day. He goes to his fucking shrink played by Marissa Tomei. Tells her, hey man, I gotta pop this shit to wake up. I gotta fucking pop this shit to go to sleep. I mean, it's fucking worse than the last days of Elvis, I'll tell you. So anyway, Spader's going about his miserable life being kind of semi-retired on disability and shit. Because he's all fucked up. And he comes home one night and there's fucking hinky cops in his apartment building. They won't let him up. And he's like, hey, what the happened? So anyway, right before he walks away, the cop shows Spader the picture of the girl. And says, you ever see this girl? And he's like, no, man, I never saw her before, you know. So we cut to the next day, Spader wakes up. He's all fucked up and shit from all his drugs. He goes and he starts looking at his mail. And he motherfucker got like a, real, not really like a hoarder's fucking apartment, but just like a real messy apartment with big piles of trash. Here's like a big pile of newspapers here, a big pile of mail here, but just shit piling up. He goes over, he fucking finally opens his mail. He sees there's somebody mailing him a picture of that girl that got killed last night. He's like, holy shit, what's going on? So he goes and he starts opening up his other mail and he fucking finds a picture of a girl that got killed a couple weeks before. He's like, what the fuck? So he goes to the cop that was giving him shit the other night. He's like, hey man, this is going on. He reveals to the cop, hey man, I'm an ex-FBI agent, shit like that. This is how I knew what was going on and all this. You know, if I can help you anymore with the case, you know, obviously something's going on. I think I know who the guy is. I think it's a serial killer that got away that I was chasing and shit. Next thing you know, he's getting fucking phone calls from Canoe Reeves. Fucking, that's the thing that's interesting about this movie is Canoe Reeves plays a serial killer and you think, what? Fucking Bill and Ted going to play a serial killer? But... This is what cool, like you think you think it's gonna be corny because he's gonna be all like, uh, like all nasty and shit. Keanu Reeves just having a good fucking time in this movie, man. Whenever he kills a bitch, he follows it right up with a phone call to James Spader. <laughs> like laughing, giggling like a girl on the phone, like, hey man, remember you used to chase me and I used to kill bitches? Come on, man, let's revive it. Come on. You moved from LA all the way to Chicago, I followed you here. I'm gonna be killing bitches here until you come back and start chasing me. So Spader ain't got no choice. Got to come out of retirement. Got to try to stop fucking Canary Reeves on his fucking reign of terror. His silly ass reign of terror. I swear, fucking, you see this movie, you would think Keanu Reeves was trying to play the Joker or something. Just clown prince of murder. Just to give you an idea kind of how wacky this movie is compared to other serial killer movies, is there's actually a couple Rob Zombie songs in the movie, and, like, they really play him, like, during the beginning and end, where they got some footage of Keanu Reeves dancing around. And he's getting ready to kill a woman and shit, and he's just dancing around, and he's fucking making little horns and running around and shit. So anyway, he gets back on the case, he starts getting the clues, Keanu Reeves starts sending a picture and is like, hey, I'm going to send you a picture every day of a girl I'm going to kill, and you have until 9 p.m. that night to try to find her and try to fucking save her. But all they got to go on is the fucking picture, nothing. So the cops are taking the pictures to the press, trying to identify these girls, trying to find them, but you know, nobody really gives a shit. There's like a couple good fucking showdowns where they almost catch Keanu Reeves, but it gets away. There's a cool fucking car chase. I don't want to spoil too much, but just the dynamic of trying to catch a serial killer is going to kill somebody every day, and all you got to go on is a picture is really fucking interesting. 
Eventually they wrap it back up where they get back into the backstory of really what happened earlier with Keanu Reeves and James Spader and what fucked Spader's life up so bad. I don't want to ruin that either because there is some twisting and turning shit in there. But basically the movie wraps up with, you know, of course Spader having to go, having to stop Keanu Reeves from killing an another person who's close and dear to him now. And the thing that really makes this movie stand out to me is James Spader's performance. He's so fucking tortured and grizzled. I mean, I hate to say it because he's one of my favorite actors and shit, but this is one of the last, I think, good James Spader performances. Like, after this, man, I record so many movies off cable just because I see James Spader in it from, like, 2000 to 2010 or whatever. Like, the whole decade, man, like, Spader was just sleepwalking. You know, he fucking, he get, like, got older, he got kind of, like, paunchy and shit. And I don't hold that nothing against him, but I just wish Spader could come back and do a fucking, like, a good return to form role. And that's why I like this movie. It was kind of, to me, it was kind of like the last of uh, Spader in his prime. And, you know, and the fact that he's going up against fucking Keanu Reeves as a show killer is just bizarre enough. So, I really do recommend this fucking movie. So, for the watcher just being, like, a good off-the-cuff fucking kind of goofy, kind of fun fucking serial killer chase fucking type movie... I'm gonna go ahead and give it eight and a half out of ten. You know, I actually fucking miss these movies. I wish they would start making some more of them. Some of the best HD DVDs rival, you know, better Blu-rays, but there's a lot of them that you know they kind of cheaped out on. And this is kind of one of them. They only put this on a 15 gig disc when they could have put it on a 30 gig. You could tell that the movie studio didn't do a real big remaster and shit. But don't get me wrong, it looks way better than a DVD, it looks way better than what you see on HD movie channels. It just doesn't look as good as some of the newer Blu-rays that have come out in the last two or three years or so. But it's still really fucking good. It's got Dolby Digital Plus fucking sound, which is better than regular DVD sound, but maybe not quite as good as True HD or DTS HD Master. But I don't know, man, for a little cheap serial killer movie, it's probably the best presentation you're going to get. Picture and sound, it could have been a little bit better, but there's really nothing wrong with it. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. The extra features, this is where they fucking done shit to Batman. Like, like nothing. Like, fuck, not, you think I'm going to say theatrical trailer with fucking nothing on this, man. Extra features, I'm sorry, man, they just done shit to bed. And it would have been real nice to at the very least just have a director's commentary or some shit, but like I said, nobody gives a fuck about this movie. Nobody. Special features, 0 out of 10. So that's it for Spader Timber, man. It really came and fucking went, you know, just like that. I really wish I could sit here and talk about Spader's fucking movies all day. You know, I try to focus on the ones that he was, like, starring in or had a big presence in. But there's a lot of ones where he just plays a villain or a little smarmy fuck. Maybe next September, maybe we'll do Spader Timber again. I can kind of dive into those and stuff. But, hey, man. If you're a Hillbilly DVD Reviews fan, I just appreciate you hanging in there for Spader Timber. But if you're really a James Spader fan... Fucking thanks for watching, man, and I hope I did justice to a fucking cool actor that all you guys like and shit, so bring on October. October is no surprise. Every fucking October, we do nothing but horror movies, so get ready. Get fucking scared. Fucking grab your shit. Grab your fucking popcorn. Grab your fucking Jack Lantern. Grab your fucking anal loop. Whatever you gotta do. Just get ready for October, because it's gonna be a fucking spooktacular! Because it's gonna be scary! <laughs>